Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3303. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. Today, Frontier confirmed there's some problems with the spawning of the Unknown Probe. Some players think there's some strange changes going on with the Unknown Structures. Frontier confirmed the beta release date for patch 2.4 The Return and there's a brilliant new album released. Over the past weeks and months, many players have reported having trouble finding the unknown probes. Now these are the Thargoid artifacts that can be used to activate the Thargoid machinery inside the unknown structure. Typically, the way to obtain one of these is to fly to a system with an ammonia world and then orbit that world until a certain signal source type spawns. In this case, a degraded emissions threat too, and inside there you will find the unknown probe, or so the theory goes. Now many players have tried this, and many have failed despite spending hours upon hours trying to find one. But other players, and Frontier as well, have insisted that this is all down to the RNG nature of the game and that eventually, if you're persistent enough, then one will spawn. Well now it turns out that this is not working as intended and there is indeed a problem. Frontier have confirmed as much and they're hoping to get this fixed in the 2.4 update. Now I'm sure this is going to be very frustrating for a lot of players especially those who have spent a huge amounts of time trying to find one. But at the very least, we now know it's not working as intended and that there is a fix on the way. However, all that said, there are some further reaching implications to all of this. After all, many players have reported sitting down on the planets near the Binacle sites waiting for unknown ships to appear, only for them to, after many hours, fail to turn up. And of course, many players, as well as Frontier themselves, insist that this is working as intended. Yet that is the same thing they've said about the Unknown Probe and they've been saying that for a very long time now. So really, who knows? After all, the most unfortunate side about all this is just how long it's taken to get this looked into. So then, if you are on the lookout for an Unknown Probe and you haven't found one after an hour or so, then it's highly likely you'd be better off spending your time giving up and waiting for a fix. Now, most of you probably are well aware of this by now and you will likely have seen my previous video. But for those of you that haven't seen this or haven't heard yet, Frontier have announced the beginning of the beta for patch 2.4. It's going to begin on the 17th of August and will roll out in two phases. First, there will be a closed beta for people who have paid access in the past. And second, a little later, will be an open beta for everyone else to join in. Of course, this only applies to PC players and won't be applicable to either Xbox or PlayStation 4 players. All the Thargoid content will be unavailable in the beta, so it will be mainly testing all the non-headline features as well as the back-end changes of the game. There's still no confirmation yet of the official release date of the live version of Patch 2.4, but in my opinion it's likely to be before the Frontier Expo, which is occurring in October. A number of players have been reporting a very interesting, if somewhat subjective and unconfirmed information on the unknown structures, they suspect them of growing. Now this theory was posted to the Frontier forums by Commander Spiridon and here you can see some comparison screenshots of one of the Thargoid sites. The first is taken at the end of June and the other is taken at the end of July. And yes, indeed they do look very, very different and there does seem to be some size differences. However, many people have been quick to point out that these are not taken at exactly the same angle and that they are taken under different lighting conditions. Lighting, of course, can make dramatic differences to things in Elite, as it can anywhere else. After all, you only have to go down to a planetary surface during the night, and then again at the exact same location during the height of day, and those two locations will look very different indeed. So for that reason, there are many doubters to the theory. However, if you overlay the two images here, and you can see the central structure is pretty much exactly the same size in these images, and they're both very, very closely aligned, now if we transition between the two images, you can see there does appear to be a significant difference between them. So what's your thoughts on fillings on this? Is the structure changing or is this merely down to lighting? And if they are changing, what could it be and why is it happening? Let me know in the comment section below. Now I just want to take a moment to congratulate the Elite Dangerous subreddit for passing 100,000 subscribers. The subreddit has been a mainstay for Elite Dangerous community for a very, very long time now. Both the moderators and the admins there spend a lot of time keeping the community what it is, and it's most appreciated. So here's to the next 100,000 subscribers. 
For those of you who are interested in listening to music while you play Elite Dangerous, you may want to check out this rather fantastic album released by Miguel Johnson. Now this does have some truly stunning tracks to it. It classes the music as epic contemporary orchestral soundscapes. The album comes with 32 tracks and is very, very reasonably priced at just $7. What's even better is that the music comes with a Creative Commons license that allows you to use the tracks with your other projects such as gaming videos or other things you may be interested in. The album is called Exodus and there is a link in the video description below, well worth checking out. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3303. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.